This video is a compilation of the beginner's guide to becoming a freelance video editor. That took me way too long to say. And I know a lot of the people coming through to this channel have come through this, uh, this, this video series. And so for my way to give back to you, this is probably the easiest way to have them all in one place. What I've done is I've cut off the fat of all of the videos uh, just to give you the uh, the bits that you kind of enjoyed, I guess. And I know for a lot of people who have missed episodes like three, four or five, that there are more out there and this hopefully will be enough to fill your bellies with. So if you enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and I'll let me take it away. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. I need to get my notes because I wrote it down. And I never write anything so it means it must be a good video. Okay, so the first question is what do you need? What do you need to become a video editor? That's right, you're already on it. It's a computer, unless you're on your phone. Uh, when you could do some kind of, you know, Uno switch and, and edit on your phone. That could work, but we, we never know. So first of all, you need something to edit on. Okay, so the first one is, you know, I would suggest if you're wanting to take this up as a business and you seriously want to go down this route, what you need to do is get your hands on some sort of system that will um, that will make it so you can video edit. You will need some kind of system. Some systems will be too weak and too ugh, to be able to do it. Find yourself a system that you can use, whether that's a family computer, uh, an editing or something like that, and then you need to get an editing software. So number two editing software you need some sort of editing software to get yourself started on it isn't important at the very start about getting a specific editing software the jobs that you're going to start out doing aren't going to be by people saying i need you to edit this on premiere pro so any editing software can be used i used to use a uh, version of um sony vegas when i first started so you can really use it and there's so many good free softwares out there like the hit film that i did which yes costs but it's pretty damn cheap so you could use any kind of software like that anything you've got your hands on unfortunately windows movie maker is no longer here remember you so yeah any software that you can get your hands on so the third thing that you need to know is about refining your skills the biggest thing that i say to people the biggest downfall that i see that people have and you know sometimes i'm guilty to this as well is uh, make sure to refine your skills and understand what is good and bad editing the cliche of watch movies Yes, once you start getting into that rhythm, you're going to hate watching most movies and you're going to have to learn to teach yourself to switch off and stop identifying uh, cuts and stuff like that. But, you know, that's just it's life, really, isn't it? It's like the same thing as understanding pacing in a movie. When I'm watching a horror film with my girlfriend, uh, if it's a good horror film, uh, it will often be like, there's the uh, anticipation. There's the weight, there's the clearance, there's the scare. So, um, somebody doesn't watch uh, watch horror films with me anymore. <sighs> so, like I said, refine your editing skills. Edit anything. Edit gameplay videos. I started off editing gameplay videos and all that kind of jazz. In fact, I've got videos out there, which I might do in a later video, going back at the first ever video I ever edited together, which was an Assassin's Creed montage in Windows Movie Maker. <sighs> That's right, so edit anything you can get. Understand editing softwares, understand cutting, how to cut with time. Beat editing, that is the most important one. Understand beats. Boom, 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 boom. But the more you edit, the better you get. It's as simple as that. Okay, now, so it's the juicy stuff. So I'm gonna go into a couple of websites where you could start out at and where you could find jobs. Uh, here in the UK, I know I found jobs on Indeed um, listing site. I'm not sure if that's across the world or I'm after. If I'm just being naive. The one major site that I actually got myself started on was Upwork. Uh, Upwork was where I still have recurring clients to this day, which I found off Upwork. It's it's a great place. It's very competitive, but it's a great place to find those small little jobs to get you started. And this is where we swing into that that next point, competitive. It's such a competitive market because everybody and their grandmas is video editing. You've got to make yourself stand out some way. And this is probably going to go against every single video I've seen out there, you know, where it's like how to get yourself your real clients worth that much money i did the first four or five jobs that i did i did for well under underpays you know i did a job that took me two days for 50 dollars, which then minus the cut ended up being like 40 30 dollars and the reason why i did that is because i needed those five star reviews i didn't need the money or you know i knew i wasn't going to go out there straight away get a job worth 10,000 pounds be like well that's just how you do it with your clients when the only thing 
thing that I've really got behind me is nothing too notable. So you need to build up a reputation before anything. And honestly, what I would say to people is when you slowly get through that, Point of make, getting a couple of jobs, getting some really good reviews uh, behind you, then you can start adding up your price. You know, your worth will become so much more. You know, what's going to be worth more? A guy who's done four jobs uh, and has five star reviews for each of those jobs, or a guy that's done one job with a three and a half star? It's definitely going to be the guy with the lower uh, kind of amount. And it's even adding to your portfolio, your showreel, as much as people hate to believe you need a showreel. In this industry, a showreel is your CV. Barely have there been any times where uh, my CV has actually come to play things. In fact, it hasn't even been updated because now what people look at is just your showreel and the notable things about that. When you get to the point where you have some good reviews, you've done a couple of uh, videos for people and all that malarkey, you've built yourself a name uh, in a tiny scale, then it start increasing your price. You know, increase from $50 to $100, $100 to $150, as more the jobs come in and the bigger the jobs get. So you eventually get to the point where you can charge $1,000 for a video that probably, you know, a year before you would have only charged $50 for. I don't want anybody coming back saying, oh, I need a job for 10p and now I'm broke. You know, it is it is an investment thing and I, th I and it's for me it's just the way that worked when being up against such competitive you know industry don't just use upwork use upwork use indeed use other sites like that you know facebook um has has great uh facebook groups now where people are looking for video editors and stuff like that. if you can make yourself a little portfolio full of all the non-paid and paid work that you've had you're going to be on the top of that market yes you'll know you're not going to be in competition with uh, people who edited like Game of Thrones or anything like that, but you're still making yourself a little landmark and growing bit by bit. And that's how it kind of, that's the best way of it working. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that helped in any way. I feel like I just bambled on about crap. We'll see, we'll get there. So in the last video, I talked about things like having a computer, it's an important part, picking an editing software, that's another important part, and also finding work on sites like Indeed and Upwork. But today I wanna to dive a little bit in depth, a little bit more in depth into those topics of finding work and how to kind of set yourself up as a business. And before I go into this a little bit more, I wanna do make a disclaimer, the fact that this isn't a video that's gonna be saying, guys, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I made 50 billion dollars of passive income. And I'll tell you what, it's exactly by paying for the thing that down below. So it's a load of bollocks, right? Passive income is possible and maybe that's for a future video, but a lot of the time it's a load of <laughs> So now to the serious part, to the video. Let's, let's get on with it. Obviously part number one of being a video editor is, is actually video editing videos and getting jobs on sites like Upwork, constantly training yourself, building a portfolio and a showreel to then take on to the next client and the next client, building good reviews. So now I want to uh, hone your business more so on how to um, make it work and make it actually affordable. Because in reality, you're not gonna be able to have a living wage on working off just Upwork and, um, what was the other one I did? Um, it was um, Upwork, no, I said Upwork. Shit. Indeed, that was it. So the most important part, apart from actually getting jobs, is starting to market yourself as a video editor and that kind of stuff. So that's right, marketing yourself is so important. That stuff like as cringy as it sounds, it, that's like having Facebook accounts, Twitter accounts and Instagram and use those social medias as your kind of portfolio really because that's how everybody uses social media everybody basically uses social media if the somebody isn't really using social media to be honest they probably don't want you as a video editor so that is step number one to really get yourself settled so start marketing yourself have professional little clips of edits have examples of your work and have your show reel and stuff like that maybe even client reviews to help you bring in more and more clients in the future and get your name out there. Oh, terrible webcam quality is back in the room. Um, so I'm just dropping in because I kind of missed a massive point, which I realized when I was editing this and the camera's packed away. So 
I'm not redoing that. So what I missed out on was the fact that uh, I forgot to explain that Facebook is still such a huge and has a huge presence to it. People think and we think that Facebook can be probably one of the cringiest places and only for women the name of Karen to talk about how wearing a mask is uh, infringing on their rights. But still, hear me out. Facebook still has one of the largest presence of people, uh, both business and just personal people looking for jobs, work, and has things like Facebook groups, which are probably the best asset that you have. So I'm not saying going into a filmmaker's forum, but looking at filmmakers or a business uh, pages and maybe advertising you stuff on there, aligning with the rules, because it can get pretty, pretty messy. But sticking around that, you've got such a huge audience and a potential uh, for so much more business and, re and creating reoccurring clients. So just keep that in mind. Uh, that's, that's what I wanted to kind of say. I've rammed that in. Probably didn't explain it well enough. Bye from the future. And as weird as it sounds and as stupid as it sounds, your Aunt Betty sharing your latest little edit or something like that or that the fact that you're available for work in a video editing style with some examples can actually make a massive difference. If you're living in a local town or a city, you really wanna start aiming at small local companies to really make them videos and make them footage. And they don't always need to be camera-based stuff. There's also gonna be some people out there who have already got footage and want you to edit them for them. So that could be like wedding photographers or videographers could ask you to edit their videos together. Family videos, there are people out there looking for video editors. And being local is even better because then you can walk into those establishments and really talk to them and get an idea of what they wanna create. Sometimes it might be a coffee shop saying that they're uh, bringing out a new coffee, you could get a picture of that on your phone, cut that out and animate that in After Effects or Premiere Pro or just make a cool little typography style video. There you go. So I know this is a short video, but this is kind of, that was kind of the main topic that I wanted to cover that I felt feel like I massively left out on the last video, which was looking at local establishment. And as I kind of explained to people, it's like local domination. As weird as it sounds, it kind of makes sense. You want to grow your bubble in a small area and then slowly increase outwards because you're gaining influence, gaining uh, knowledge, skills, and most of all, you will be gaining... Um, and what's the bloody word? Reputation, that's the one. Reputation. So that's all I have uh, time for today um, because I don't actually have anything else to say. I might have to make a part three if I'm watching it back and think, Shh. So that if there's two things you can take away from this video, that is make sure to market yourself on social medias, take advantage of that, post high quality photos of yourself or of your branding or, or this and that. And just, just going back to that point, don't feel ashamed if you want to maybe buy a fiver or something like that. Just some graphic art and stuff. You don't feel like you have to do every single thing. Like, I know I'm a video editor, but I'm not very good visual um, FX kind of creator. I'm not good at 3D models, really. I'm only starting to get into 3D modeling and stuff like that. I'm more of a basic, you know, oh, downplay myself. And two is look at local domination. That is in sense of looking around at local businesses who might want videos and films to really stock it up. Offer some unbeatable prices and something that I personally do is that if somebody refers um, a company or a brand or something to me, they get 10% of that profit, whatever the profit is. So if the job is a thousand pounds, that person will make a hundred pounds just for recommending me uh, to clients. So the first question that came through was from a week ago and it was from a bloke called, uh, or, or a woman, uh, it was from somebody called It's Ace. He said, uh, the things that people never seem to talk about is copyright rules and taxes. That is what's stopping me from getting into freelancing. So here we go. The two big, most boring things that we could ever talk about, but they are unfortunately the most important parts because if you don't do these, um, you're fucked. So, taxes, 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 taxes. I hate taxes, that's my rule number one. Part 1A of taxes is hating taxes. So after my first year of freelance and absolutely panicking that the, the tax man was gonna come and take my, uh, my family away from me, um, some of them they can take, not all of them though, because uh, I need some of them. 
But anyway, the tax man uh, is a frightening idea, but in reality, it's not scary anymore. So when I started freelance, I got some tips from some uh, people that I know, family, friends who are freelancers and blah, de, blah, de, blah. And what they often did was they hired an accountant, which from my first year of freelance wasn't gonna happen. They hired an accountant, they gave all their receipts to the accountant and they kind of sorted and filed the taxes. So because I didn't have that money, I had to do the research and find out how the heck do I do my taxes in the least amount of time with the least effort required because I didn't know what I was doing. And I found probably the perfect thing ever. And so if you have been uh, a singleton and dated and used the app Tinder, this is probably the best app that you could ever find. So this isn't sponsored. I just have a dear love for this, uh, this, this, this thing and it's called QuickBooks Self-Employed. It's basically Tinder. You swipe left and right on it uh, and left for business, right for personal and you just bam, 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 bam. In the UK, you file it to HMRC and it's actually really easy. It does everything for you. You can even select uh, uh, like criteria. So if you're going to a certain shop or you go to Primark or any of the shopping centers, you can automatically set those to personal or to business or whatever. It's honestly a beauty and it's not even terrifying once you get into it. It's so easy to use. I It's never let that fool you back. It's very important, you can get screwed over if you don't do your taxes, but using an app like this, an idiot like me can even do it. So that's that's saying something. Christ, fan break. Well, my fan broke, so it is currently sitting in a bin. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to leave this on. If you can hear a fan in the background, you're gonna have to deal with it because it's 29 degrees and I'm dying. <gasps> okay, massive question number two is, um, how do I get into video editing? How do I get into video editing is, is such a common question, but it's probably the easiest thing to really get into. All you need to do is have a bit of a portfolio. Do things like edit fan videos or edit gameplay, depending what you wanna get into. If you wanna get into corporate, uh, find uh, stock footage online from sites like Pexels and Pixabay, create those into compilations and little movies and stuff like that and just edit things. That's all you need. You don't really need a CV. I got to the point where I was freelancing that I just stopped using my CV. I, I do nowadays uh, because I'm doing more film-based stuff, but back in the day, it was just a showreel. And even now, it's mainly just a showreel. That's all you need is a showreel. And so where do you find freelance work? I've covered that largely, but stuff like Twitter and YouTube is, 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 a playground for video editors. You have a lot of YouTubers who are looking for editors constantly. I constantly see them on my Twitter feed. So maybe go follow me there and I'll retweet them when I see them or whatever. This is a bit of an in detail one. So people are asking, do I need to go to uni to get editing jobs? No, from somebody who went to uni and is probably the very rare person that I feel was a complete useful bit of time it also trained it didn't train me to do these crazy effects or to do certain things it, i learned the logistics which i think are increasing insanely important i learned the theory behind editing why you edit how you edit who you edit for experienced i learned a lot of things to do with filmmaking which then had an effect on my video editing so before my video editing before uni and after uni over the period of time was massively changed but it depends what you want to go for if you you want to stick to corporate say corporate youtuber and all that kind of stuff make that your job that's totally doable you don't need to go to university you can do it from from your home because i learned the mass majority of everything that i know now and i still learn i still look at tutorials i'm still editing a project or something and i'll look up a tutorial how to do something new is YouTube. I haven't really been a person who learned a lot from Skillshare or websites like that. I've always tried, uh, but I think there's a lot of basic video editing stuff on there, but YouTube's the best place to be. And it's a lot of the time, it's just editing. Editing and YouTube. It's, it's free, it's easy, but I'm not gonna say rely just on those two things because what university does teach you is it teaches you the logistics and the theory behind it. But if that's something that you're not too fussed about, 
then go for it. YouTube's here and just start working. You don't have to have an age requirement. You don't have to do anything. You can just start building a portfolio. If you're 15 and you're building a portfolio of just edits and edits and edits, then that's not a bad thing. That's not, that shouldn't stop you in any way, shape or form. I started my first gaming edits when I was uh, 15 and got my first uh, technical job. Uh, it, I wasn't paid. It was, by, it was a big company as well. I think they gave me like a, a gift card or something like that. But it was experience, it was basically work experience. And I did that when I was 16. And so there's no age requirement. So don't worry about that. And if you're 85 year old man, Keep going, buddy. Once again, another question. I, I honestly, I keep looking at so many questions and they all are, where do I start video editing? How do I learn to video edit? YouTube, basics to learning video editing. Start editing stuff. Use stuff like stock footage and gaming videos and anything that you're interested. I have people always say that they edit, you know, fan videos. That's not bad. To be honest, some of these, I think there's some, I can't find it. I'll have to uh, have a look for it and, and react to the channel or some, something like that. But there's a there's a YouTuber out there who is, makes fan videos, like you know the ones where it's like about an actor or some shit like that. The edits are insane, like absolutely insane. They do a whole breakdown of how they do it, and it's like it's a fan video, but it's honestly mental. It's brilliant, brilliant. And the last one, the last question that I'm going to actually cover is programs to edit. Edit on absolutely anything. Honestly, you do, there's no quota for it. The, I personally prefer Adobe. I've, I've used Avid, I've used iMovie, I've used Final Cut, and I've used Sony Vegas, and I've used Window Movies Maker. And honestly, they're <laughs> stick. To, if you can get Adobe once you've got a couple of jobs, then boom, do that. Because it's worth it. You know, you've got clients that kind of want to prefer it, and you, yeah, you know, go for it. Yeah. So one thing I see coming across the comment section quite a few times is how much shall I charge? What you should charge as a freelancer is completely down to you. And the amount that you charge will evolve with your progression as a freelancer. So like I've stated in other videos, I've charged clients for absolutely uh, loads of stuff for absolutely nothing. And then also on the other side of the scale, I've charged uh, quite a bit of money for not as much as what I would have done originally, if that makes sense. The way you have to think about it is how much are your time and effort and skills worth. And this is something that took me ages to come to terms with. So I had realized at the start that I was charging far too little for uh, the amount that I was giving out. Not only the video in itself, but the skills, the knowledge and the um, kind of aftercare that came with it. So I wouldn't just deliver a video, I would deliver a video recommendations, uh, how to use the video, kind of what you could do further and how to make a move off that. Another thing is how do you receive money? Uh, that's one question I've seen come up quite a few times. Uh, the way I receive money is very simple. I either use direct bank transfer or PayPal. Don't try and overdo the system. It's just really not a good look. And if you really want to take this as a business, just do the formalities. It's not that bad. Another question is, how do I feel about, uh, this was this was posted by Charles. Easy name to remember, Charles. That's my name. When approaching friends and family, how do you go about that? How do you charge them? Right, okay, from the start, you can do friends and family favors only if it helps you out. I realized very early on that a lot of friends and families are going to uh, kind of want to use your skills because Unfortunately enough, uh, they're a good skill set. Whether you're a video editor or a photographer or do a bit of both, it's the best skills that you can have for social environments because that's just how it is. But remember, if it's a business, it's a business and you have to make some Whether you offer a discounted price or you kind of do a couple of gigs for free for something in return, it, 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 you're, a work, you're, you're working. So don't let yourself get trampled on. Take that from experience. So one aspect that a lot of other YouTubers aren't talking about is the fact that YouTube game editing is what a lot of people want to do. And uh, I'm I'm here to settle it, right? This is the official response from the Lieutenant Video Editor, Charlie Rodens. And that is, yes, you can make a living out of editing somebody else's YouTube videos. It's, it's not as easy as it is to come by because it probably is. 
you've just got to go out there and find it. Twitter, sometimes they've done job listing sites. I've gotten, I've worked for one YouTube uh, company, one huge YouTube brand uh, through Indeed, which I got for that job for. And then I worked for another substantially large YouTuber uh, just through Twitter. So one of the two, make sure to keep your eyes open when the job's there it's great you know they're fun videos to edit usually you might start on a probation period and then if your relationship builds that youtuber you can start editing their videos full time like i said before i'm kind of ramping off a load of small questions that i've seen before uh, so everybody can kind of get the answer to these ones sending off your footage when you're sending off clips or or uh, drafts or anything like that. I've used WeTransfer and Dropbox and Google uh, Drive. I actually find Google Drive was the easiest to start out with because what you can do is you can create a folder and then have all of that client's foot drafts and stuff like that in that one folder. The only downside to the free version is the fact that it's only 15 gigabyte, but I, you, you can make it work. Multiple accounts, ladies, that's what I'm saying. Multiple accounts. Another thing that I'm finding is that our younger audience, I really wanted to get started and give it a go at becoming a freelance video editor or earning some kind of money from uh, video editing. Yes, that's completely possible. It's not impossible to be able to do that. Like I said before, you need to take a step back, understand what your skills are, how good you are at those skills. Like I can surely say there's a lot more uh, better video editors than I am that who are under the age of uh, 18 for sure. But uh, it's just, yeah, that's not age. Age does not define you in video editing. Age does not define you. You are only as good as your skills are. And to end this question segment, uh, I'm gonna talk about kind of, you know, getting started with video editing and how people really uh, can get into it. There is no constraints holding you back, apart from really how good your PC is, so that is probably a constraint, but there is no constraints holding you back from getting into video editing. If you can have a PC that can run anything that's even free, you can get started. There are no constraints. You don't have to have Premiere Pro. When you start getting to bigger clients, of course, you need the industry standard. You need to be working in a certain workflow, but when you aren't, you can do basically whatever you want. So one thing people don't seem to get with video editing is the fact that it is pretty easy and open. It's not easy to get jobs, but it's easy to really learn. Everything that you need to know is right here on YouTube. You can learn every trick of the trade and every effect and detail and course that you need right here on YouTube. And the more you can open up and expand your skills is the best thing you could ever do. So for a lot of video editors, what I would say is once you get your feet in the ground, get your tiptoes in there, start looking at expanding out, you know, growing yourself, whether that's photography, videography, they're all conjoint skills that can massively improve your overall um, sellability and hireability for sure. And keep on having your fingers in loads of different pies. Never give up and never surrender. Yeah. Touch your soul. Use that pinch of salt. Pinch of salt. So covering up the last bit, what I do want to talk about is kind of the idea of working from home, working as a freelance video editor. You have a lot of people who um, talk about working from home, about how hard it is and how it can kind of start grating at you. For me, somebody who's been working from home for the past like six years now, it's really nothing ever different. You have to start having your own routines and kind of looking into how you work best. If you want to pursue video editing, you've got to come to the realization of that you have to become your own mini boss. You're gonna to have to start working on your schedule, working on this, working on that. So if you um, say have not yet to become a video editor, but you, well, you're the video editor when you start learning video editing. If you aim to become a paid video editor, a paid freelance video editor, you need to start adding in those fundamentals right now. You need to be waking up in the morning, learning, 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 and learning. If you're not doing anything with your day, you need to learn a new skill. That's basically what I do with every single minute of every single day. Some things don't stick, some things do stick. It's like that old saying, you throw enough shit at a wall, something's gonna stick. So let's take a look back at some of the things we've already covered. Some of the things that we've covered already have been the basics. We've been talking about how to get yourself started, looking for work on Upwork, Facebook, Twitter, and all those kind of places. We've covered taxes, questions, and everything. But now there's a couple of things that I've missed that I'm, I, I'm sorry 
for missing, but we're gonna make sure everything to the T has been covered. And it's kind of something that's so important that it's it's a bit of a shame that I haven't actually covered it just yet. And that's because I don't know, I haven't got a good enough excuse. So the first point that I'm gonna be hitting on is your social image. I can do a whole video about social media and about how I kind of, after working on social media for so many years now, that I kind of hate social media. And that if I didn't actually work on social media, I wouldn't be using social media at all. I think, it, you know, I think it's damaging for so many people for so many stupid reasons that I think we can avoid. And maybe in the future I do a video talking about those ways that people can use social media in a way that it's not going to damage their social and mental health. Just video ideas. So the first point, as I already said, is your social image. Right, if you're a video editor, you need to let everybody know that you're a video editor. And that doesn't mean by going to your Facebook and telling your aunt Betty that she needs your video editing skills. That is your social proof. That doesn't mean you need hundreds and thousands of followers. That means you just need somewhere for somebody to look back on and now understand exactly what you do. And that goes over to my other social media thing, which is be careful what you post on Facebook and all those other things because potential clients will be and I promise you they will be looking at your social media doing their background checks because that's the easiest way now to do background checks on basically anybody. Yes people can fake it but nine out of ten times it works. I'm not gonna lie I'm gonna tell you a, a bit of a horror story. So when I was younger I got hacked on Facebook you know when one of your friends actually just uses your phone but they say you hacked you and so taking the story basically to the end uh, a potential client saw some strange things that my Facebook page had liked which obviously wasn't me. I know it sounds like it was now but it wasn't okay yeah right so your social image your social image needs to be absolute pristine you either wipe out that social image beforehand or you create a whole new one so keep your family photos and your lovely photos of your puppy, Bobby, you know, the, all of them taken on a crap phone. Keep them away and then have your first social proof, your social image as a professional kind of way. That doesn't mean by being too professional, you know, people want to see that you have a personality, but they don't want to see you at, uh, you know, doing things you shouldn't be or just uh, getting uh, absolutely wasted on a weekend. Yes. And it's very simple. All you need to do is just cover the things that you do. If you're a video editor, start putting some of your edits on there. Put tips and tricks, put pictures of you working, put the clients you've worked with and all that kind of stuff. You know, brand yourself. That is probably the biggest thing. You can fake it till you make it. It's totally doable if you brand yourself correctly. And I'm going to give you probably one of the worst examples, but best examples that I can give you for that. And that is um, me. Fake it till you make it. Brand yourself bigger than you actually are. Why is it that without releasing any numbers, I have so many people that have watched and liked the first video of this that they don't know anything about my past? That is because I've brand, branded myself correctly. And you can do that too. You've just got to show people that you are confident with your abilities and you know exactly what you're doing. And that doesn't mean that you have to know every single tip, trick and uh, rendering technique and effect to create to really get down that you you know like I always said in all these other videos I still use tutorials because you know how am I supposed to cram the entirety of After Effects into my brain and adding on to that issue that I find is I see that a lot of video editors and potential video editors that you need a good picture show yourself the one thing at work makes you do is it makes you upload a good photo of yourself so just get a good photo you do not need a professional photo by any stretch of the matter everybody's got a phone just get a good photo of you in some good lighting if you want to know a little tick a trick with some good lighting is stand adjacent to the window not in front of it not at it not behind it just stand next to the window get your mom to take a photo of you it's the easiest thing you could even do. Doing exactly this, you know, taking your phone out of your pocket, just going next to a window, standing at either a 45 degree or at straight on from, yeah, either look pretty good uh, and just take a photo. It doesn't need to be on the best camera. It doesn't need to be in the best circumstances. You just need a picture of yourself. Show who you are, smile and kind of, you know, 
Um, it will make a world of difference, I can promise you that. Brand yourself, make yourself a real person. Yes, we are a legion of people behind the computer, but we do exist, so put your face in front of it. Make sure you're known. You don't have to over put your face into it, but people wanna know exactly who they're working with. Because when clients are spending their money on you, they want to know exactly where their money's going. And if you look like a believable person. Now the next trick is gonna need this hammer. Protect yourself. I've learned this once again from experience is when you do too much goodness that you can sometimes get um, effed over. And I'm not saying in a physical sense, I don't even know why I'm holding a hammer. It's just helping me think about what I'm gonna say. By protect yourself, I mean make sure you just follow the rules. Get yourself obviously set up with your taxes and stuff like that, but when sending stuff out to a client, don't just give them the end file uh, as a review because they will just walk away with it. Sometimes they will. I know it's, some, it's scumbaggy, we're not protected, so protect yourself by putting watermarks on your work. It's the easiest way to finish about that. So you're set up, you're ready to go, but before you know it, you're having the biggest issue that you've ever had, and that is speaking. Right, I know it seems trivial. I know it seems trivial. It seems like a problem that doesn't really even exist, but it does. As you can see in my past video that I just did, which is um, how to talk to a camera, this still applies to talking to clients. What you find is that so many people struggle talking to clients that they just end up um, not being very likable or not even building a bond with that person. And the reason why this is important is once again, we work over the internet. We work from here and we, a lot of the time, never see the client. So next time that you're having a conversation with a client, I want you just to talk directly, get to know them, build a relationship, because the most important thing is you want that person to trust you. A lot of my clients building on reoccurring clients and staying consistent with certain clients is a lot of the time because of relationship. I've got to be honest. There are people that they could just get probably for cheaper or whatever, but they in, like working with me. So it's, it's fine, it's good. So do that, be nice, get on with them you know, build that relationship. It is probably one of the most important things. If they text you, give them a shout. And another thing on top of that, when building a relationship that I would always say is just sometimes somebody needs a favor. If it's a smaller client, don't try and act like he's some big mega corporation or he or she's a big mega corporation. Act just like a friend. And that's what some of them need. They wanna bounce ideas off you. They want to build uh, that idea. They want you to basically be enthusiastic about their product, even if you aren't. I want you to be enthusiastic. I want you to act like their product's the best bloody product that you've ever seen, even when it isn't. And bouncing on the idea of having a social image, you need to get yourself socially prepared by having a show reel. That might mean doing some little videos yourself. That might be um, really investing into some gear that might even just be finding clips online and b branding them together and making them your own. It's not the hardest thing in the world. It's easy to do and you can do it. You've just got to be persistent. Now, the next point is going to be about social again with, I guess it's just a social video. This next tip that I'm giving you is about networking. Networking is probably one of the greatest assets and I wish I started off with that. That's why, ad time, that's why I've created the video editors and filmmakers at hub over on Discord. The link is down below. Please go there. We're starting a group, a kind of community where filmmakers and video editors can uh, interact, get work, blah, 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 and all that other stuff. So adding on to that, yes, networking and just interacting with other like-minded people can make a world of difference. If you want to know how to do a particular edit, you just ask somebody. If you want to do this, if you want to do that and, and work with like-minded people, then just go ahead and do it. I think, don't think about this as a very solo and singular activity. It isn't. You need social skills. You need the skills to um, be able to find the work in the first place and even compete for work because you might be competing against somebody who is low rates and a little bit better of a, a, a smooth talker than you are so learning how to interact is a major skill and that doesn't mean it in a harsh way you know you need to practice at that and that's something that I've had to practice at myself not only um, have I had to practice at the, the tough questions which is how much should I 
pay and charge and stuff like that, but also just how to build relationships, how to interact with that person, how to grow a relationship. That is probably one of the best things that you can do. So we've come to the end of this video. So through this channel, we are learning to improve on our skills as being video editors and how to kind of expand our careers and prospects on becoming freelance video editors. I think if you have watched all of these parts and really learned from them, then you are ready to become a freelance video editor. And it's just the start. So don't get too ahead of yourself. You're still at the start, but the start is exactly where you need to be at. But before I finish this video, I just want to say thank you to absolutely everybody who has watched this video or any of my other videos. It is an absolute honor to have such an amazing community built through these this series. So ladies and gentlemen, without no further ado, I will see you in the next one. No. Pretty Caroline, oh, 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 stone